Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, fast forward to, you know, you mentioned this briefly, uh, you know, it seemed like the Christian radical right had reached an apex almost with the George Bush years. And then Obama came and it was, you know, sort of, I don't want to say quieted down because there was still the tea party, you know, going on, but it just seems like the, the, uh, attention that was given to the evangelical right has sort of, um, you know, fallen from then. And it almost seems like now it's been ratcheted back up with the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett. And I wanted to get your reaction to that and, and, and just uh, see if you could provide any insight to the belief system that goes on between, um, you, you know, in these like deeper evangelical, um, you know, communities. You know, I, I, um, I just wondered if you could provide any insight into the line of thinking and how they've gone after acquiring power through the uh, Supreme Court and through the judicial bench. Yeah, I can. And I want you to bring me back to that question, but I want to take a little detour that's actually part of the answer. But sure, you know, I'm 68, so I may just wander off here, you know. Um, Amy Coney Barrett is a really great case in point. And let me explain what I mean. You know, the old parable about putting a frog in cold water and you turn the temperature up a little, a little, a little. And then if you put it, if you do it slowly enough, you can boil it to death and it never knows it got killed because it has climbed, it, it adjusts to the water, never feels the heat and dies. I don't know if that's true, by the way, but the story, that's the, that's the story. One of the things I've observed, having been in this racket since I was 16, 17 with my dad through till now, almost 60 years, oh, well, yeah, coming up on 60 years since I'm aware of this, and then uh, more than 50 active, is that if you had fast forwarded any of these evangelicals, from flake leaders like Pat Robertson in it from the money to sincere people like Billy Graham or any point in between or my dad or me to the present. And you had told us that the evangelical movement would get to a point, and I know what you think, you think I'm gonna say Trump, I'm not, I'm gonna say Amy Coney Barrett, where we would be pushing her nomination, they would have laughed in your face and I'll tell you why. Amy Coney Barrett, is part of a bizarre uh, cult, people of praise, that back in the day, people like Dad or Billy Graham or Pat Robertson or Dr. Dobson or any local preacher down the street from any denomination, charismatic, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, more, they all would have agreed, this is a heretical group not because they're Pentecostals and speak in tongues, but because they appointed people within the group over you to make life decisions for you. And you had to get permission to get married, who you could get engaged to, who you made a type deal. And they would have called this a cult like Jonestown or one of those cults that went off and they all drank Kool-Aid and poisoned themselves at the end. This would have been seen as beyond the pale. These are not evangelicals. They are not Christians. These are members of a control cult. This is what we are not. We stand against this freedom in Christ. You follow Jesus. You don't follow people. In fact, the whole evangelical argument against Catholicism that I grew up with is we don't have a pope and bishops because the Holy Spirit guides us and every person can read the Bible for themselves. So the very idea that we have moved so far, and then I'll get back to Don, get to Donald Trump, but that we've moved so far that evangelicals became so (coughs) desperate to hold on to power by, for instance, rigging the courts with 200 new federal appointments from Trump, all checked off on a list by the Federalist Society, that they would be ranting and railing, condemning uh, Democrats and the media for even questioning Amy Coney Barrett's Catholicism. They very conveniently talked about her being a Catholic without mentioning that she had spent the last 27 years, not only in, but as a leader of, as are her parents, her siblings, her kids, in what is the evangelical version of Scientology. And no one's allowed to talk about it because all of a sudden evangelicals say, well, we're being persecuted and this is religious freedom and so forth and so on. The biggest criticism of Amy Coney Barrett 40 years ago would have been evangelical leaders saying we don't want the image of Christianity uh, damaged by having someone purporting to be a Christian who is a cult leader in a cult, because she was a handmaiden in the thing, uh, directing other women, being confused with Christians. They would have been on TV being interviewed saying, don't mistake her for one of us, in the same way that they would say that about Christian science or Scientology or other offshoots 
that are religious in nature, but hey, it's not us. That's how far it's come. So, you know, that's an example most people wouldn't use in that way. Now, of course, when you get to Donald Trump, you know, you're over the cliff and, and <laughs> heading into the abyss in terms of the frog boiling and dying, like the evangelicals are supporting this guy and now buying into everything from QAnon to all the rest of it.